Hello and welcome to this ONDR module video. This is video 804 in our series of XK videos detailing how we removed and refurbished our automatic transmission. Now in this video we're going to cover jacking up the car and supporting it. Our particular method is wooden blocks. So uh, hope you find the video interesting. We're breaking this video down into several sections as per usual. First, we'll look at the jacking points on the car. Secondly, the jack plus extensions. Thirdly, actually jacking the car up, the method we use. Then we'll talk about the support blocks that we, we use in particular, these wooden blocks. Then we'll show you a bit of a test to show you how secure um, we think they are. And uh, finally, we'll look at some example jobs we've done using these um, uh, blocks. Okay, first of all, the jacking points for your Jaguar XK8. So there are two uh, jacking points on the sill, uh, a pair each side, as indicated here. Uh, they're actually uh, used for the uh, emergency jack, and it actually locates in a little joggle. Um, if you're interested, the standard jack can be found underneath the spur wheel in the luggage compartment. Um, Here's a picture of the front right hand side jacking point. You can see sort of it's clearly uh, the shape of the joggle there. That's where you want to be positioning uh, your jack. And we've got the same on the rear left hand side jacking point there again. It's quite clear where you need to jack. There are actually two more uh, central jacking points, uh, front and rear of the car one underneath the radiator and one underneath the rear differential. Now, the front central jacking point underneath the radiator is shown in the circle door there. Warning, this is behind a, uh, or should I say, when you jack at this point, you're jacking a plastic piece of trim. Underneath there is a front cross member and that is a structural member now you need to make sure that front cross member is not rotted out. If it is, you're going to jack straight up into your radiator and uh, probably crush the radiator and not jack the car up very high. So warning, when I did this the first time, I actually took that pla uh, the black plastic under, under tray off, that uh, plastic moulding there, and I checked the front cross member and mine was perfectly okay. Anyway, a bit of a warning there. The actual, there is actually a moulded arrow uh, that indicates the central part, point of the, the member there or underneath the member and the jack at that point. The rear central jacking point is underneath the rear differential and the rear cross member as you can see in the circle area there. Um, you, in my opinion, you need to place a jack in between those two rear bolts. Um, that's sort of the back of the rear differential. Um, that's a very secure place to jack up from there and it doesn't put any stress on the actual rear cross member itself. These actually are Jaguar approved jacking points and they can be seen in the workshop manual. Here's a couple of uh, illustrations for you for the front and the rear being used. If you're interested in getting a free copy of any Jaguar documentation uh, regarding the XK, take a look at our website database, which is modriol.co.uk. There'll be a link in the top right hand corner here for workshop, manuals, brochures, specs, model year guides, miscellaneous manuals, to us, uh, sorry, technical service bulletins, and there's some articles about the development history of the XK. So take a look at that website. It is a sort of a a database of everything XK related. Okay, secondly then, the Jack Plus, uh, the extensions. So I recommend using, or I yet to use, a three-ton trolley Jack Plus, uh, some custom extensions we made in order to get the car up in the air. The, the part number of the Jack I use in, is an SGS TJ3LP. It's actually a very low profile Jack. Now, you need that to get underneath the front and rear uh, central jacking points. Now, low means it's actually a height of 98 millimetres or roughly four inches. And it actually will extend to a maximum 
a 535 millimeter um, but it, that isn't quite high enough so I've actually made a pair of custom extensions the small extension is a height of 175 centimeter, uh, 175 millimeters or roughly seven inches and the large extension a height of 255 millimeter roughly 10 inches high now the extensions bolt securely and directly onto the jack. You can undo the, the main jacking point and that will relieve, uh, reveal a boss diameter 30 millimeters. And I've actually made the extensions to locate directly onto the boss and then bolt through that to secure those extensions directly to the jack. And then you get your jack extended height um, up to 710 millimeters. Um, which is really quite high. Um, third um, section then, jacking up uh, using the front axle. So before you jack up the vehicle, make sure you chock the wheels that aren't going to be jacked up. You don't want the car rolling around the garage or rolling down the road if you're trying to jack it up. So slide the jack under the front of the car. You need to find and align the jack with the central arrow we spoke about before. Um, you need to locate the jack centrally, obviously front and back of the vehicle. I actually made a small jack sort of uh, pad out of wood that goes in between the rubber strip um, located along the bottom of the that plastic moulding. Uh, if you don't do that, you've got to dam you're going to damage it. Um, you can probably crush the, the rubber, but it will flick it out and you'll have to glue it back in again. Uh, you, once you've got that uh, located correctly, you can then raise the jack. Ensure you have the jack positioned under the arrow as, you've, as you're uh, jacking up, as I say. And the jack will raise both front wheels um, together. And as you can see here, you can get it really quite high up in the air. Thirdly then, um, jacking up the rear axle. Similar idea, same principles for the rear suspension. Put your pad under the point I noted before, right at the back of that front uh, rear, sorry, the front, the, sorry, at the back of the rear cross member, right under the back of the diff. Um, again, it will raise the, uh, the rear wheels together and you can put the blocks underneath which is what we'll go into next, the support blocks. So once the car is raised, you can support uh, by putting blocks under the wheels. Now we've custom made these. You can also support the block, uh, the um, support the car under the sills using the same blocks as you can see here, which gives you more access if you want to take the wheel off and uh, deal with the suspension. Now jacking and supporting using these sill points you basically jack up each sill point in sequence, put a block underneath and move to the next one, uh, sort of in rotation if you would. The Using the central jacking points uh, is that basically you can do the same, but instead of doing each corner, you do the front and then the rear and then the front and then the rear. Um, Please ensure when you do jack up the car to put the car in neutral because you don't want to uh, damage the gearbox or the transmission, uh, uh, the diff or anything while you're doing this because it will be locked up. So as I said, put it into neutral. Using this method, you can raise the car circa 600, 680 millimetres. Now the sports themselves that I use are actually made up of four parts. There are three identical blocks plus a, jockey, a chocking top block. Now these stack onto each other um, as you can see here and each block is made from wooden blocks bolted together uh, with these uh, coach bolts. Um, highlighted in yellow now as i say these are the picture of them it's a little bit less sophisticated than the pictures but you can see how they interlock with each other so as i say they stack onto each other one onto the other and the recesses 
in the other in the the next block is actually located by the nut and coach bolt in the other, and it, it ends up with a quite a sec- secure assembly. Now the height of each block is roughly 150 millimeters times three. You get about 450 millimeters of lift. Uh, the footprint I used was 100, uh, 510 millimeters by 380 millimeters. So it gives quite a square block. And I say the access under the car ended up at the point of the sill was about 480 millimetres or 26 and three quarter inches. So testing the blocks. So I'll try and demonstrate how robust this method is by trying to push the car off the blocks. I don't want to bend, bend the quarter panel, but this car is not going anywhere. Okay, um, just to be completely thorough, I'm going to actually try and push the car off the blocks this way. Oh, sounds mad, but I'm going to try and do it. I'm going to do more damage to the car than I am actually. In the, trying to push it off and actually the car falling off the block. I say it's a very secure method of uh, holding the car up in the air. Okay then, some example jobs that we've done using these blocks. So a single set of blocks are used that to uh, remove the crankshaft position center, sensor and you also add access to the radiator drain plug, albeit I've never removed that because I'm frightened of damaging it. I've actually removed the front suspension, as you can see here, by supporting the underneath the sill. Here's the whole uh, lower cross member assembly, completely refurbished with those uh, V mounts and uh, the hydraulic mounts, quite a big job, but uh, well worth it. Uh, I also removed the rear suspension, a similar method at the back. Again, the rear suspension assembly here, all refurbished and painted with two-pack, um, was it EM121, I think I used for that one. And uh, next we need to use the same blocks to remove the main exhaust system, which is what we're going to cover in the next video. So there you go, that's the details of how I've done most of the work on my car, supporting it um, and jacking it up in the air. Hope you find that interesting. There's lots more videos on our channel. Please take a look. Please like, comment, share and subscribe for more XK videos.